Welcome everyone to another edition of the Civ Battle Royale. My name is Dawkins and it's time for part 92, How to Augment Your Dragon. Now let's get right into it. Hello there everyone, this is Lunar Needle and I'm here in assistance with Blue Cassette to bring you the long-awaited part 92 of the Civilization Battle Royale. This shitpost was brought to you by Gamer29475 on behalf of SpongeBob SquarePants. However, instead of celebrating a beautiful song, he celebrated as Boar's absolutely ravaged Vietnam, potentially bringing this game slightly closer to a resolution. At this, I would provide some kind of summary of this coming part, but I really cannot do this part justice. I, I really can't. Buckle your seatbelt, guys, because we're hitting plaid. Here we can directly compare differences to see what exactly happened last part. We see a few cities nuked off the face of the earth. A new city was settled named Jirflarsklerde, just south of Nadang, and next to Antioch. We also see Artashat, Ekbatana, Persepoli, and Gordium all flip to the orange, while another city just off of frame gets settled right beneath Helsinki. Also, we see some tiles exchanged in aggressive citadeling. Remember folks, citadeling in Civ is actually a terrible diplomatic modifier and Sweden did it twice to Sabir. Could this be an indicator of chaos to follow? The famous A Spherical Melon Map, but now enhanced with puppeted lands. You can see how each and every area has been treated by their owner now. More notably, we see a puppeted Sweden, which considering the mic drop in the last part might not be a good thing. Boers also have a surprisingly high amount of puppeted cities, as does Australia. So we'll have to wait for a full and total annexation of such cities to reach peak condition. User Glycolysis, famous for having five alts banned on Discord, yet being a rather hilariously opinionated Discord staff member, has brought us a cool new map to look over and ponder. Fresh off of the falling of Devin, he has decided to create a hill and mountain map showing the terrain difficulties ahead for the Boar Offensive. As we can see from the severe amount of hills and mountains in the Viet Corps, should Boars reach deep enough to pass the Middle East and border of Sri Lanka, they'll have a far easier time pushing into that core, provided they don't get lost in the Tibetan mountains trying to hashtag free Tibet. Go for the Dream Kruger and reunite us with our... Boy Thunder Wonder? Oh boy, that's... I hope that doesn't stick. Fun fact, I wrote this slide before the Power Rankers even released their part and for good reason. Can anyone even question the Boar's dominance now? So instead of detailing why the Boars are running away with this game, I'd like to point a spotlight at how bad everyone else is actually doing. The Inuit aren't doing anything despite having weak neighbors. Brazil isn't building a navy despite their only threats being naval. Vietnam is still building drone UAVs. And finally, the war between Sabir and Vietnam has been going on for so long that we had to cull the images of the conflict as to not have Dawkins die from liver failure. I really appreciate you guys looking out for my health, but I'm an adult and I'm gonna drink what I want, okay? As a reminder, I, Dawkins, am going into this blind, so you're gonna see what I see as I record it. Munich immediately takes damage from the war announced last part. We also see damage cross over to the other side, but it doesn't seem to amount in much. We might see Munich flip, but the main focus is on the Iceland-Sweden meat grinder on top. What worries me isn't the lack of units in this shot, but the lack of planes, which will make melee engages far, far more easy. Uh, yeah, Munich looks to fall, I'm thinking, next turn. Uh, it's gonna flip right then and there. Uh, Hamburg is next. All of those cyber subs are gonna take out some of those other things, but we shall see. I think this is going to go in Iceland's favor. I mean, look, if you look at Munich, there's a couple of units there, and Hamburg, there's a couple of units, but everything east of that is empty. Iceland is really going to sweep up here. Armenian soldiers watch as Tigran Asurda flips to being Icelandic with small chance of flipping back. Lovely border gore appearing in the process. Good job, Boers. Messine also flips, but this one seems to be temporary. I expect Constantinople to flip many times in the future. I mean, it could. There are... I mean, there's only one, two soldiers nearby. I don't think Constantinople is going to be much of a serious threat. But Tigran Asurda... Uh, that can flip back and forth a couple of times. Who knows? 
It seems that Vietnam is forming a strong wall against the Boers here, but I doubt the longevity of this front. Uh, what, what wall? Ghazni's gonna get crushed in a second. Uh, good usage of planes in the former Persian capital means the cities will be flipping and fast. Once Kabul and Samarkand fall, it might be time to consider Vietnam toast as a world power. I, I'm gonna have to agree with this. The Boers are really just sweeping through. Those mountain ranges are gonna be a little tough for them. But once they go through Gordiam, Susa, that's it's over. Oh, hey, nice strip of flat desert you have there, Armenia. Uh, that must be nice. But in other words, look at all those specialist slots being used. I wonder if they might turn that flatland desert into a commercial hub. What would they sell? The dreams of an empire or a lot, and I mean a lot, of sand? Nobody knows. Uh, I don't know who they'd sell it to. It's coarse and gets everywhere. Fatapur Sikri is actually a really nice city, all things considered. 200 science from one city and 50 production isn't nothing to sneeze at. The future era improvements are also coming in, so it'll be a while before the city becomes strong. It's just a shame that they are so far behind that they aren't a player. Uh, but I know someone would happily take this city from their hands. However, in order to be an empire, you have to be this tall to ride. This is the bare minimum an empire cities need to be for their owner to be considered a world power. Now, if only they could be producing literally anything, uh, anything at all, they're not producing anything, uh, especially with production at 169.2, like, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, their infrastructure before they become Australia's digger dumping ground. Ugh, that's a slur if I've seen one. However, that seems to be in the south, as if they're planning something. Hmm... Hoved, meanwhile, is what you want to avoid. Sure, it has a modicum of production, it's losing citizens to the Great Famine, and that will hurt them even more. He needs to trade tiles with other cities now to recover this city to its former glory. Helsinki, meanwhile, is suffering from a greater plague. This one's capital is suffering from the amount of science and gold it's needlessly producing. I know AI doesn't like to rebuild improvements, but now is the time. Ditch the golden culture and get food as soon as possible. What are you doing? Wait, I just realized I'm giving advice to an AI. I need to stop. Opting to move to the lesser used cities in the major empires might help us reveal what's in the minds of these madmen. Although I don't think we'll need to wait long. What is this foreshadowing? What's going on? Shut the fuck up! Dude! Yo! Oh, holy crap! National Heritage Sites gets enacted! Oh, I'm fucking kidding. Are you serious? The International Space Station Australia has declared war on Vietnam. Wow, holy crap, this isn't good for Vietnam. This is not good for Vietnam. As the mic just got dropped, Henry the Hammer Parks has opted to enact judgment in front of thousands of viewers on the Battle Royale Network. Vagan itself reels back from the pain, containing all the one plane in the shot, presumably planned to be sent towards the encroaching Boer menace. Remember that time I said that Vietnam was dead if they lost Kabul? Yeah, that time has come and passed. They will just have to weather this storm, and it is a perfect storm. Holy crap. To weather the storm, you need insulation. Which is funny because I just tried insulating my window to prevent all these goddamn buses and trucks for making noise in these recordings. Uh, and considering their army of submarines, it seems likely that they will weather attacks from the south. However, you cannot forget the diggers to the north and the assault from southern Japan. This will truly test the Trung sisters' war prowess. Now just declare war on the Kimberly so they can get out of your country, and the Blackfoot too while you're at it. No, don't do that. Actually, yeah, this might be harder than even I thought. Fighting the Kimberly would be a death errand. While it would be close, it almost certainly means one front would collapse. You cannot get those Kimberly out, they're like rodents or cockroaches, I guess. You have to accept them for now, Trungs. It's actually amazing to think that they thought they could expand their empire or take down a once top tier world power. That's a scary yet amusing thought now looking at the sad state of them. Poor guys. Love the color though. 
But what are we dealing with here? Things have changed since their last conflict has occurred, namely the size. Considering Australia's jaw-dropping production and military size, if they devote their full self to this war, this could be a bloodbath. You might laugh thinking that, and indeed you might laugh thinking this might not happen, but remember, all biases are randomized to a certain extent. Let's hope that Australia rolled high. With a drop in land area, Vietnam represents a solid fourth place civilization with an impressive amount of trade route and a huge amount of gold. Actually, I think they're fifth place with the power rankings. They could buy their way to survival if they play their cards right. There is a way they could actually turn on Australia and potentially carve a way inwards while boars get exhausted in the meat grinder of former Afghanistan. Right? Right? Like that, that could happen. Maybe. Ha ah. ha. Oh, uh, about that. There's a good chance that we might see the Great Vietnamese partition from all sides. That's a large enough land army to actually delete the armies around Rak Hia and Hoi Lu, and possibly take them with this along. Henry Parks just has to hope that the open borders agreement with Sejong doesn't expire as he does. Okay, so this is ridiculous. This front may be small, but we could be seeing a five-front war. Two stealth attacks from Australia to the north, an aerial and naval assault in southern Japan, a frontal assault right in front of the Vietnamese Corps, and the Great Boar Offensive to the west. The question is, which wall will crumble first? As the turn progresses, we see this fragile front evaporate like water in a flash pan. As Gosnia and Gordium see their health in the red, as even the first sign of blood at Samarkand already shows. It seems that Australia will need to act fast, or we might be seeing Hanoi fly more orange colors sooner than anticipated. Come on, Australia, beat them to the punch! Well, uh, Sweden's fucked. Uh, enjoying Tigranocerta and Constantinople, Iceland? Well, say your last words because it seems like your grip on them will only last briefly. Speaking of losing grip, Messina is firmly in the hands of the angered Ingolfer Arnersnern. Sorry. And most likely for good. In fact, the good news for Sweden ends here. With strong offenses on the mainland, it seems the flash pan of conflict will exist on the extensive European land border and the naval front between the Icelandic Isles and the Swedish core. Excitement is brewing, baby. With the war front pushing past Cologne and towards Hamburg on land, it seems that Iceland for now has the advantage, but it's hard to say if that's from the ground troops or the six planes stationed in Neapolis. In the navy, however, it seems to be opposite, but it's still far too close to tell. I wouldn't be surprised if this navy was completely bare in a few turns. Uh, honestly, the Swedish have a lot of carriers and subs. Uh, Iceland has a lot of carriers, but they have cruisers to take some cities. Um, I think Sweden is pretty screwed, if you ask me. <laughs> what is going on? What is happening? The Blackfoot and the Bucks are livid as the declaration of war is targeted towards their southern competitor instead of themselves. Ah, uh, yay! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie in saying the potential for this is great, especially considering how massive the navies are. It's just the stubborn fact that the Buccaneers are preventing this from being a bloodbath. It'll take a chunk of the Inuit ice sheet fleet to unlodge the ram into the undefended Brazilian coast, for any damage to come of this war, uh, I mean, speak for yourself there, buddy boy. For now, keep your eyes on Port Royal as one open border agreement of war could spell the unification of the Americas, but the Inuit take Laredo. Ah, uh, such revenge for Texas, it seems. Uh, the Inuit can only have all of the Texan lands, no matter if they founded it or not. Everything belongs to... The Inuit, which, oh shit, Austin is controlled by the Blackfoot, that's not a good sign. But, oh man, come on Blackfoot and Bucks, get in on this, get in. Also a quick edit, just because uh, Luna was talking about open borders between the Inuit and the Bucks, they already have that, so... <laughs> The Inuit submarines merely watch Tulum, knowing that without a melee unit, it's impossible to capture that city. They just watch and plan the decorations for their new target. Should the turret go there, or should they be remade into a game room? Decisions, decisions, excuse me. In other news, it seems that Australia has open borders with their once rival. What is Parks planning that he hasn't already enacted? 
The Kimberly are doing their best to ensure someone from Australia makes landfall. Without melee units to protect, these cities are practically defenseless. Australia will need to use their air force and, well, do damage to these cities or cut through the endless array of empty carriers and subs. Although, amusingly, the Kimberly existing is causing a submarine with nuclear capabilities to be stranded off the coast of Amarvarti. Is that a cheese, I think? Or I guess a city. Uh, well played, Kimberly. Well played. Getting your... Your sweet revenge. Ramming into the wall with enough heads should work, justifies the tired 200th digger just as they ram tirelessly into a rock I would just say something about range, units, and air power, but I think I'm spinning tires here. You keep on doing you, digger carpet. You do you. What's important to note is that the digger unit is a Great War infantry replacement or upgrade from a worker. These things are very, very outdated, so bashing themselves against a 155 defense city isn't going to do a whole lot of much. Uh, but they still have the power of numbers. Hey, it worked for Russia in World War II, huh? Hey, Iceland makes some gains! It seems that Tegia, Tegia is firmly in the hands of Iceland as the armies could march towards Wuj and Corinth and deplete the little air force they have. This city could flip a few more times, but at this point it might be best to draw the battle lines here. This is a surprisingly good usage of the Icelandic military already flipping two cities in this area of the cylinder alone. I told you. I told you about the Air Force. With this array of bombers, it seems unlikely any Swedish city in this part of the world will remain in green health. Comfortably laying waste to Munich already and not even sweating the assault on Cologne as Hamburg takes damage. Meanwhile, in naval warfare, Sweden tried ramming ships like it was World of Warships. But unfortunately for them, that doesn't seem to work here. Isolating ma a majority of their damage and some nuclear capability of the icy fleet. Our golden age has ended. Please, it's just begun as Tygen de Khan has won the in-game rap royale and has passed the microphone down to the sub. Will you be a contender? In other news, Korea has a military again. At least here, kind of. Uh, but yeah, Brazil must be in bad shape or they're looking to get out of dodge if they think uh, that they can <laughs> declare peace with Tygen. Uh, the Inuit are going to be pushing a whole lot of snow down their throats, I guess. How? I mean, points for effort, but how do they snipe Thylee B by Nainai from Vietnam? It seems like they can hold this as well, considering the absolutely pitiful amount of melee units anywhere near here. And Bon also looks to fall as Amravardi, the cheese city, a tactical location to store all of Vietnam's planes. Taking the Amravati Air Force would definitely hurt the campaign against, well, everyone that they are fending off right now. Send them to the Boar Meat Grinder now or face penalties later. Also, hey, Kimberly, attack. Like now, please. More shots of this area is always nice as I see actual gains here from Vietnam if they play their cards right. Exposed Air Force aside, this seems to be a great for their conflict. If Agon is the point of landfall, it's over for Vietnam, as there is melee units and Air Force to support them. A rare combination means cities can flip and fast. However, slowing that remains a decent army whittling away at the advanced future world melee units knocking on Vagan's door. Can Australia into land? I love reading Lunar's things very literally. They can into other people land at least. I think it's a meme from like 2006. I can see that Korea is building a military. In fact, they are building it as fast as possible, filling out lands and stacking units in city as they desperately hope that Bak Jia remains the resting ground of the digger horde. But looking at it, not many of these are diggers. In fact, they're all respectable units. If they make their way towards Vagan, they could actually punch into the Empire. Stop watching anime and go fight. Weebs. A lot of them. How the hell is Gosney not orange? I mean, uh, what's going on here, am I right? Self-deprecating humor aside, we can see why the Boers are winning. They have a strong air f... Wait, there's not an air force. It's just nukes. Uh, oh boy, so the walls of Jericho fell last part, so now the walls of everywhere in the entire world will fall to nuclear power alone. If they can use this power, they can utterly devastate Vietnam's core and cities one happy nuke at a time. 
the worker bot army is following closely behind to clean up the accidental, quote, spills of nuclear material. Uh, I've seen a tank here in Batakaloa for so long, I actually think this is just what the tank does. Practicing with refugees of nations once strong. In other words, I just realized... In other words? In other news, I just realized Baghdad flipped. Lunar, keep those eyes open, buddy. That's actually good news for Vietnam, as flipping cities is what prevented a total wipe of buccaneers off of Africa. Keep on flipping till the end of time, Vietnam. Not just for you, but for the game. While it seems that Constantinople might remain in the tired hands of Iceland or Sweden, the core of Europe is starting to tremble and move in the way of Iceland, and with a rather empty core. Yeah, that's what I've been saying, dude. It seems that if they can cut through this attack, they might be able to take Europe whole. I love my Sweden dearly, but unless Gustavus Adolfus pulls a miracle play, he could lose all of the hard-earned gains he acquired. A truly Icelandic move to capitalize on another army's weakness from previous conquest to conquest himself. Oh, let's not forget. Once it was Ireland after the war with England, then it was France after France tried fighting everyone, and now it's Sweden after Finland. If they have the troops, perhaps they're aiming to march on Sabir, which would lead to an empire that might be able to take down the Boers. Maybe? Probably not. Reading off of page 44 on how to fight wars good, he sent his boats to ram submarines and battleships. Immediately regretting that decision, he moves his army back, which might be to his detriment. Now he leaves his western flank imposed to a still existent navy, which could potentially flip... Nah, actually, never mind. Both of these armies are already spent and have been for a while now. Now it relies on the usage of every available resource they have, even distraction carriers if need be to win this war. Sweden might be mildly undefended, but they have the means to unleash a submarine-based terror on the Icelandic fleet. It looks actually kind of humorous to have them all the way up here in the ice. It's like they're planning to use the ice against the self-proclaimed land of ice. If only they weren't so far away. Next time, Adolphus, use your military. That'll truly spook them. Don't think of it. Don't you dare go out in a blaze of glory. You know that now with their navy, the Boer Menace can easily paint Cuba orange. Although that happening would cause a dogpile collapse by Inuit and Brazil, which might be what's needed to unify the Americas, uh, so it might not be that bad. And another note, imagine if Boers had diggers. Look at all those workers. They uh, could be completely crappy, useless units for... The Australians. If there's a Mark III, it'll need to cap these workers because all of these units are definitely adding to the turn times. Mmm, look at these frosty boys. I said this was going to be a good part, but could the anyone be planning a Korean takeover? Look at all these units nearby the border here, as well as the impressive bombing carpet. Maybe that's why their military is all here. Perhaps this area will explode in the coming turns. All I know is that if it happens, it will be glorious. Thai Lee B9 remains Australian for now, but a nearby giant death robot wants to say hello. A few cities, namely my son and Ambon, are in the red, but without Vietnamese units, it seems unlikely that there will be any more sweet gains on the front with all the peacekeepers in the way. Hawaii confirmed Puppet Master of Australia, Kimberly, and the Blackfoot. You heard it here first. Oh, whoa, um, XCOM units, we haven't seen those being used, uh, very recently. And uh, now they're swarming. That is crazy. I don't believe my eyes, but I could have sworn it happened. Holy hell, Australia made beachhead, and with their amount of troops pouring in, it seems like the city might flip a lot, but it seems likely to hold as well. Just off to the left side of the image, there is Hanoi, and if this blitz is successful, we could be seeing an Australian foothold. Australia can into land. Stop at that meme. It's like 14 years old. They can, but for how long? Yikes. Uh, even Rakhjia seems likely to fall. This is not looking good for Vietnam. I keep saying that. This declaration of war seems surreal, but now we could be seeing the utter destruction of Vietnam as a whole. Stop building all infrastructure now, Trung's Henry's a-knockin'. 
As Baghdad falls back into the robotic clutches of the boars, Gordium flips for one turn. It seems that while the tactic of annoying the boars is working, Samarkand and Lashkargar are in the yellow, while the first bombing raids over Ishvahan slowly drop the HP of that city. Gaining Constantinople is one thing, but Corinth is in the yellow, Adrianople is starting to take damage, and the defense around Munich trembles to the oncoming advance. At this point, I could see Sabir potentially making gains against Sweden, as well as due to Vietnam being busy, busy boys and girls. Things are looking dire for you, Aldolfus. You need to act and fast to keep the dream of a Swedish Europe alive. The navy has evaporated like I presumed it would, while the war front is too close to call here. It seems like Sweden isn't doing so great from the unit HP. It seems like Munich will fall soon with Hamburg falling over shortly after. But it can easily go the other way. No, it can't go easily the other way. Look at what's going on. The, the Swedish would be, at best, uh, defending what lands and gains they've had. But they're not going to make any headway towards Iceland. I mean, look at Cologne and Neapoli. Their defense eclipses over anything that the Swedish have to offer. They're, they're 10 tech ahead, I think. Uh, it's, it's not going to go well for the Swedish, we'll just say that. Alas, the part comes to a close. It feels so short for me as I joined narrating when I had to deal with 90 plus slide monsters and before the Civ Battle Royale, I had to do a 110 plus slide nightmare for the Lurking Royale. Ugh. But that's not to say this part was been or has been boring. In fact, I say the opposite. What you see grayed out behind you should summarize why this part has been one of the best easily since the reboot. Australia might be looking to carve out a foothold in Vietnam, and with their insane unit production as seen here, could potentially challenge the Boer carpet. They'll soon, no doubt, border. They could then forge an attack on Korea and Mongolia and actually flip to the east to bring all green and gold that way. The fate of the game lies in the success, or lack thereof, from Mongolia, Sabir, and Korea's part as giving either the Boers or Australia that land uh, which could mean the end of this game. Either way you look at it, this part will be the part that changed the entire game. Although, when it comes to production, it's a battle of the Boers versus the Inuit, to be honest. And for good reason. They both have neighbors with far weaker production and a far smaller army. Uh, if the Inuit could launch XCOM armies in, they could severely weaken, if not secure, a coastline city for future assaults. I just think betting on bloodshed aside from the reconquest of Laredo might be playing it up a bit too much, but we never know. I was thinking Thai B -B 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 was never going to be conquered by Vietnam, and look who rode in. Uh, the Australians, I think. Uh, lunar. I think that was what it ended with. Keep your eyes peeled on this front for any odd units moving through Buccaneers or around them. Great Famine indeed. Holy hell. It might take aeons for civs to reach or get to their pre-hiatus numbers and some kind of stretch of the imagination, but one thing is for certain is that some are more hit, hard hit than others, but almost all are at or above 50% of the way recovered, and some like Vietnam and Brazil have more population than before. Thankfully, at this stage in the game, citizens don't amount for much beyond science and great people. Oh my, Henry Parks will have the money to fund any expansion at this rate. Maybe this is why there are so many diggers around. Either way, it seems that many civs are getting money from other civs. The only one untouched by Australia's money-sucking hand in North America is the Blackfoot. Great job, guys. The Blackfoot continue to impress us as Arianism spreads in North America, while Armenia does all of the heavy lifting with Catholicism. Meanwhile, the healthy Lutheranism remains the strongest in the world due to being in the worker-laden Africa at over a thousand devoted followers. Boars once more proving why they deserve the number one spot in the power rankings. We get it, Lunar, you're a Boar fan. I, for one, will never be biased. Now, here it is mapped out for your viewing glory, the dark blue delight that is Arianism and the Black Foot. Uh, just I, It just outshines all that doo-doo in the rest of the world. Like yellow and browns and reds. It looks like someone took a dump on the rest of the globe. Oh, that, that rich, rich blue. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Something about biases. 
Anyway, now I, uh, while I could go on about wars, I'll leave that microphone to you. Echo in the comments what you're hyped about. Are you more hyped about the Inuit and Brazil war than I am? Do you think Australia will struggle to hold land against the Vietnamese? Do you think anyone will stop the incoming Boer carpet of doom? Now while you rant and rave about who will win these three wars in this part, I'll make my adieu. If you want any more AI games or related content, please check the CBR Battle Royale, the hopefully coming Rap Battle Royale, and the Civ AI games for more amazing comment. Content, excuse me. This has been the all-knowing Lunar Needle doing the text narrations and also the charismatic Dawkins if you're listening to the audio narration. Together, we both bid you farewell. And with that, even though he kind of led me out on that one, my name is Dawkins. This has been part 92, uh, How to Augment Your Dragon. I thank you so much for joining me today. And, oh man, do I have to do that thing that all YouTubers do? Like, like and subscribe if you like this crap. Uh, I don't want to do that, but it's, it's also really helpful. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time.